Chelsea won, Crystal Palace nil, we won a game. Chelsea won a game, Kai Havertz scored a goal and every single one of us is happy. Listen, I don't care if it's Crystal Palace because if you're a Chelsea fan, you have been suffering, you have been deprived of victory. The nutrients of a win have been not in your system. Chelsea have won two games in 12. I am going to support this win wholeheartedly with a smile on my face and today's review is gonna be very positive because the player show me something I've missed. Character, energy, resilience. These players today stepped up. This is Chatting Breeze. We've got the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Oh yeah, and one more feel. Mikhail Mudrik is announced 90 million euros alongside, and this is the beautiful part of it, Arsenal Tears. Eight and a half year deal. Yes, eight and a half year deal to support the amortization. And he was presented at halftime for Chelsea. But today, we're not talking about that. We'll get into the review. Let's get in. All right, gang, simple as this. All I need from you lot today, because if you're happy that Chelsea won a game, because I told you it hasn't been happening for a while, hit the like button. A hundred thousand likes is what we're applying for. Other than that, subscribe to the channel because you guys want to support, show your support. And finally, in the pinned comment is my Instagram. DM me with your questions about football. I respond via noise, voice note or a message. Other than that, let's get into the good because I've got a lot to talk and get off my Come of the hour, come of the man, the good. And this is important. Today's result, epitomized what we need in this character, resilience, and I think a lot of people want Kai Havertz to fail. The reaction to Kai Havertz today, and Mason Mount, I'll be honest, is actually pathetic. People want them to fail. Consistently, one loose touch and people are complaining. One silky attempt to do something, people are complaining. One miss of a chance, people are complaining. And you know what? Kai Havertz scored a great header today. He missed a good header as well, where the cross came across and he missed connected it otherwise it's a goal and people are like you know what he's shit no he's not he's just a player going through a lack of confidence got us a winner today we've got the three points and we needed these three points so let's hope he builds on this because at the end of the day he's our top goal scorer in the premier league this year with five goals with five goals kai havertz is our top goal scorer this kid is a good player and I think people just want him to be something he's not and then they get upset when he isn't. All round, his game was decent today. He wasn't great, he wasn't even good. But you know what? He stepped up when it mattered and got us the three points. And I am grateful for that. One player that I'm always tough on and I always criticize because I think he is gutless and just a road runner. For me, was Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher's performance was fantastic today. Credit where credit is due. The kid was receiving the ball in tight areas, like I like it. He was turning with the ball. He was driving the ball into the heart of the Palace defense. When he got into the final third, he was getting his head up and picking people out. He wasn't just hitting areas. He was trying to hit men. He was trying to get the ball to a Chelsea top so someone could finish it. His passing, his link up, his urgency off the ball. The guy had a great game. The way he he was absolutely shit housing the Palace players. I loved it. everywhere we did anything positive. Conor Gallagher was involved. The goal came from Conor Gallagher and Hakim Ziyech linking up, and it was a quick one-two from a short corner. Ziyech puts in a beautiful de delivery and a goal. Speaking of Ziyech, Ziyech is a player that I can't get behind because of his high turnover. But today, Ziyech showed me something that I really enjoyed and I wanted to see from Ziyech on a consistent basis. The ability to try things on a nice basis, the ability to actually run with the ball and take a man on every now and then. And finally, his weight of pass was very good. Ziyech he showed the fans today he cares and for me I want to say thank you because this is I know it's the bare minimum to get that from him but these days we don't get that from Chelsea teams man we really don't so the fact that I'm seeing my team build some character I'm seeing my team play some attractive football it's actually nice to see and Ziyech was good as well today then you need to start looking at Kepa Kepa today saved us on many occasions. Whether it was the header from the corner from Schlupp, whether it, whether it was a shot from Mateta from long range, whether it was Mitchell in the first half where Kepa caused his own problem, but he made a good save with his chest. Kepa had four or five good saves and arguably could be our man of the match in some people's eyes because without him, we can see the goal and the game change. So Kepa had a good reaction to a poor few weeks as a player. What made it, in my opinion, made his performance even better today was the composure he had in front of him. The composure people in front of him had. Whether it's Thiago Silva and 
Talking about Thiago Silva these days is just a given, right? This guy is absolutely phenomenal. There was a sequence of play, that, in my opinion, that summarized everything Thiago Silva is. We know he can defend. We know he's soothing with confidence. We know that this guy is a go of defenders, right? When it comes to retirement, people are gonna speak of him like he's a gone fit, as I like to call it. But when it comes to that sequence, there was a corner, header out, Thiago Silva headers it back into the danger area, comes back to him, headers it again back into the danger area, and then volleys it with his left foot, Guaita, great save. But for me, it showed the fight from a leader, and that's what we need in this team. We need some leadership, some character. We need players to say, you know what? Tenth isn't good enough, and I'm gonna be the reason we're gonna change this. Badashi, Badashi was amazing today. Badashi, I think, I can't pronounce his name, I will learn, I'm sorry, my friend. But for me, he started off like a player that was shaky. He started off like a player that was making his debut in a new league in a team that was, doesn't have much confidence. And he knows he can't get off to a bad start. And Zaha gave him a few little... T but after the 15th minute, the guy is a good centre-half. You see why we spent £35 million pounds on him. He's tall, he's strong, he's quick. His ability on the ball is very nice to see. His long-range diag is pin point. There were a few instances. Look. Centre-backs get time on the ball, right? And when they have time on the ball, they can either do two, one of two things. Either give it to Jorginho, and Jorginho will give it back to them, or Jorginho will turn out and try play. Or, they can pick a pass. What Rudiger used to do very well, and Badashiel today did that. The switches, consistent. Lewis Hall, Lewis Hall, switch to Trevor, to Trevor, to Ziyech. It was so nice to see. It was confidence. And when you have a bad shield and a Thiago that can do that, it just opens it up because all of a sudden, teams won't be giving him time and space to develop this. He won a lot of headers today. And for me, what was very important is that we need to start utilizing his ability in the air. When I, I, I read a scouting report on him and it said he's very dangerous from set pieces. Reason being, he attacks the ball very well. Well, we best start crossing the ball into him because our corners pony at them. But I hope it develops. One thing that was very nice to see was our overall interplay. So Trevor Chalaba, who had a decent game, came in when we had the ball. Lewis Hall bombed forward. The difference was when Lewis Hall bombed forward and gets the ball, he doesn't do what Kukurea does or Chilwell does and wants to play into feet. He forces people to run. So he'll just knock it down the line and force a Chukomeka a Mason Mount to run. When we get Mikhaila Mudrich on that left-hand side, some urgency, some pace, that pass is going to cause a lot of teams problems. Purely because it's into space, you've got someone chasing it with quality, getting the ball, isolating someone one-on-one, -on -one, their body shape's wrong, you're moving the defense around, it's positive. We need to be like this more and more. Today's result was fantastic. Yes, there are a few negatives we're gonna get into right now, but otherwise, love it. All right, so the two negatives I have today is, number one, Kepa had to make a lot of saves, right? But some of them are self-inflicted. Like, Kepa will never be my number one goalkeeper. No matter how good he is at making saves, Kepa causes too much panic around his own box. Kepa's like an idiot at times, you know? Like, Cross is coming, you're not getting it. Like, don't make the decision. I can see it, my girl can see it. You're not going to make that cross. Yet, he comes, tries to punch. Yet, he comes, tries to collect. He just puts himself in no man's land. And when he's in no man's land, you know what ends up happening? Defenders have to start doing things they don't want to do. There's no goalkeeper on the line. Thiago needs to drop onto that line. The whole back line literally gets evaporated in front of your eyes. We have some problem. It's basically condensation in front of us occurring. And everyone's like, oh my God, people aren't in their positions. It doesn't work. I'm telling you now, Chelsea need to upgrade on this keeper. No matter how good he is at reflex saves, he is a liability. Today, he was great. But at the same time, he caused so many problems out of his own doing. A simple cross into the box and I can't have my heart rate going to 180p. I'm not doing the stepmaster at, at the gym. It doesn't work like that. Number two, the dependency on youth is worrying. I saw a lot of people get angry at Carney Chikueka today. The guy is making his first start. Why are you getting angry on a guy that's making his first start? He wasn't good. He really wasn't good. But he's making his first start. He's going to be inconsistent. He's allowed to be. He's a kid. He's going to develop. Lewis Hall. I think Lewis Hall needs some finishing practice because his finishing is poor. Manchester City, both two games, he had multiple opportunities to finish, didn't he? 
Fulham, multiple opportunities to finish, didn't. Today, multiple opportunities to finish, didn't. He needs to learn how to finish. If he learns how to finish, we've got one heck of a player on our hands. Because if he moves into the midfield, late runs, creating chances, pure striker of a ball, it's going to give us a good player on our hands. And I feel bad for putting him into the bad, but I always have one rhetoric. Your age shouldn't matter when you're in the first team, but at the same time, it should. I know that makes not a lot of sense. Because once you play for the first team, you're wearing the first team bat badge, you're wearing the crest, and you need to start playing. But the reality is, I can't expect a lot from an 18 year old. But when the 18 year old's getting multiple chances to bury game, it is frustrating and we need results. He is going to be inconsistent. We're not going to butcher him. We're not gonna be shouting at him. But at the same time, we have to maintain some element of standard. And that's just my personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. The ugly truth is, and this is gonna hurt a lot of people. Yo, what was Mason Mount doing today? Like, I don't remember one good thing Money Mace done all game. Like, Mason Mount's time as a Chelsea star is evaporating in front of our eyes. It is liquidating in front of our eyes. It is getting run out of town the way Roman Abramovich was run out of Chelsea by the UK government. This is absolutely preposterous from him. What did he do in 90 minutes of play? The guy was inconsistent. The guy wasn't picking passes out, he wasn't getting on the ball, he was lackluster anytime he did get on the ball. His decision making was poor, he's trying to cross it, goes for a shot, he's trying to uh, shoot, he's going for a cross. It just doesn't make sense, like nothing he's doing is mapping. And that's the worrying part for me. So I don't know how we're going to improve on him at this moment in time because Transfer window is still open, but I don't see Chelsea getting rid of him in the summer. I really don't. I see him renegotiating the new deal, signing that new deal, and then staying put for a while. But it is what it is. I don't want to put a negative note on to end the video, but all I'm going to say is, look, we got 28 points after 19 games. So it's not a pretty season. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is great. 28 points after 57 get points available is not a good return. This is Chelsea Football Club, the standards are higher. Let's go and try to secure as many points as we can in the second half of the season. Let's aim for 40. 45 will give us around about 63, uh, 73 points. That could give us a chance. It can give us a sniff of getting into the champion. We can go on a better run. And if we go on a better run, then hopefully we could make the champion. But it is what it is. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Chelsea win, and that's all that matters. See you around.